Hello, darlings, and welcome to tonight's episode of Living Out Loud with Loretta. I have been speaking to one of my favorite people, Miss Linda Lynn. Now, us finally getting to sit down and talk has literally been, I don't know, maybe like a year in the making, potentially. It was wonderful to speak to her officially and talk about what she's been doing, what her journey has been into, you know, being an entertainer, being a singer, being a songwriter, what her journey was as a young parent. You know, um, I don't understand young parenthood, obviously, because I started rather late, but it's, it's, it's a story she and I have shared since we've known each other, but I love just having that different perspective of like, okay, start your family early, and then later on, as long as you have everything still working and everything is tight and right, you can still carry on pursuing whatever your own personal dreams and personal goals are. It is possible, it is doable, if you're lucky enough to be healthy and happy and nourished and balanced. Linda and I are both Libras, so I'm gonna say that is that has something to do with the fact that she is, you know, just very, very balanced. But don't get me wrong, she has a fiery side, as do I. <laughs> and our fiery sides have clashed a couple of times, you know, but that's friendship, you know what I mean? And that's getting to know someone. So I love that we were able to kind of just sit and talk on camera, on the record, and for people to hear what her journey has been, um, you know, and where she is now, and how she is, it's like having, now that her children are grown, she has a new, like it's on to the next stage, the next stage of her life, and it's very exciting, you know, writing music, doing music videos, she's covered in tattoos, hot, 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 I love her. Um, I love the force that she is in my life. Um, I am inspired by her and just love our connection and love her story, you know? So different, different strokes for different folks. I started late, she started early. We're both doing what we love to do. I think that's something for everyone to kind of try and live your life your true authentic life as much as you possibly can you know live this one life you have and live it out loud that's what she's doing for sure all right meet miss linda and we are recording welcome okay. welcome to another episode of living out loud with loretta happy new year yeah. I miss her. <laughs> oh, my guest, Linda Lynn, whom you guys all know. Linda is such a good friend. And we met, I don't know what, like two years ago. Linda Lynn, singer, beautiful model, writer, something, just everything. This woman does everything. I call her my Latina Barbie, Miss Ooh. Linda Lynn. Welcome. Thank you, Loretta. Oh my God. It's finally, I feel privileged that I'm on your show. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much. It, it was overdue already. And uh, um, definitely looking forward to this. And, and it's exciting. Well, let's, let's go back. First of all, before we proceed, hold on. I'm forgetting about the most important part of the interview. Do you have an adult beverage? <clears throat> well, I do. Oh, let, let's see it, boo. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, one second. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Let's see, let's see that ball. What's that little, oh, that's a delicious glass. Oh, look at that. I Darlings, know that listen, oh. right? If my audience could see around your studio, I mean, obviously I've been there a few times, so I know it is full of delicious bling right up my alley. I love, love, love it. <laughs> so let's cheers. Cheers, cheers yeah. Cheers, darling. Eyes. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> stunning. Oh my goodness, I love that. Your nails look amazing as well. Well, thank Mine. you. Bling, bling, just Mine. for you too. Right? Oh, mm. <sighs> Okay. Miss Linda Lynn. Yes. You and I, you and I, we met. I mean, the, first of all, let me start by saying the reason I even have this podcast is because you planted a seed in me. <laughs> That's right. Wow. <laughs> we did not use a condom. No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> you planted the seed in me when I first met you. Remember, so we're going back now. And I'm sure we've told your audience on your show, Could Be You TV, which was on like what, what, two years, three years, right? On Facebook Live. Is that right? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was about it was about two years by the time you and I met the show had been on for about maybe like a year and a half or yes, something. Yes, and something about that. Yes. About. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, would you mind telling my audience how you and I met? Oh my goodness. It is pretty much a funny story because if all you all know, Loretta is Loretta, right? So we were at a, um, was it a function or it was an open mic, right? Yes. It was at an open mic. In the city. In the city. Open mic that was run by our friend Bobby Atiko. Yes, shout out to him. He's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember coming out. This is all me. All I remember is um, everything finished. We're walking out. And I hear, it was like kind of like slow motion in a way where she comes in, like very dramatic, like she's in a part in, in, in one of her movies or show. And she just comes in, kind of intimidated, I'm looking around, she's focusing on me and she's getting closer. And because, you know, she is, she's this beautiful woman with this big hair and big everything. I was like, you know, when you get closer and I just get smaller, darling, who are you? And she pins me to the wall. I'm like, oh, it was like this. Um, hi. She's like, she's sizing me up and down. I'm like, oh my God, what's gonna happen here? I had no clue. I didn't even know how to defend myself. And usually I'm gonna defend myself. <laughs> and and um, she's like, and who are you? I didn't even know how to, uh, all I did was I took out one of my cards because you know I was uh, plugging my show and I was plugging myself you know, as an artist. And I say, hi, I'm Linda Lynn here. Check me out. Bye. <laughs> Literally, right? That is exactly what you did. You gave me a card. You said, I'm Linda Lynn. And there was your cameraman with the camera, like waiting, like, okay, what is going on here? You handed me one of your cards. Like, and then Linda Lynn, and pew, off you went. I yeah. looked at the card. I think I looked at it and it was like, okay, this hotness. I think I put it in my bag. I think I did put it in my bag or my pocket. I was wearing like a big faux fur black jacket, you, black coat rather. You were extra. You came in uh, yeah. like you came in from a movie set. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, in my mind, I am always on a movie set. You know what I mean? Uh, so so yeah, and then and then I wanted to because I was then trying to do like a little reel for a local radio station and I wanted to interview you because I knew you looking at your card, you had a show. I was like, fantastic. Let me speak to her about her her job, what you know, how she got into it, blah, blah, blah. You and I, I was texting you, I think, or emailing, I can't remember. We were I trying to figure out the date. Right. We were trying to figure out a date and time to meet in the city. And at the time I was calling my segment like tea and a chat with Loretta or whatever it was, something like that. So it would be <laughs> over a cup of tea in a lovely venue in the city. We wanted, and I'm like, I'm saying, I was like, oh my God, I gotta go back into the city. Like, okay, I'll just do it for her. And, but we just can never get, I guess, a, a, a date, right? A date going. And then I don't know how we managed to figure out, like, hold on, you live here. And I was like, hold on, but I live here. We literally live seven minutes away from each other. That was, no. And that, I was like. That was, that is the creepiest, most amazing. Um, I think you had seen uh, my show, the show. Yeah. 
And I yeah. believe where it was out of, and he's like, oh, your show is out of, uh, at that time, um, Strong Island. Um, Strong Island, yeah, Strong Island radio, radio, radio and television, and television and radio, yeah. This is on Master Pequa. And I was like, yeah, she goes, oh, why? Like, do you, where do you live? And I was like, I live here and, and, and you know, where I live. And you yeah. said, no way. I literally live <laughs> in the next town over. I'm like, what? I was like, no, wait, so, wait, so let's, Let's get this again. So we meet in the city, okay? We meet in the city. Um, we couldn't get a date going out on there for some reason. Then we find out that we live five minutes away from each other. Yeah. That, yeah. that was the universe. Right? And then we find out like our birthdays are what? Like a week, two weeks apart or something? What is it? What are, I don't know. Because we're both Libras. So I'm- Okay, so that's either, okay, but let's just start off with this. Okay. okay, let's just start off. So you are Loretta, obviously, L. I am Linda with L. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that alone is creepy, right? So we're Libras. Mm -hmm. we're, okay, we're Libras. We're both L's. We live a town over. We're both in the um, entertainment industry. Mm. That alone, right? Yeah. Then what was creepier? That your daughter and yes. my daughter share the same birthday. The same birthday, 10 years apart, right? Like, yes. oh, nine years, whatever it is. Yeah. That's mind blowing. <laughs> this is what in the Jewish community is called beshert. I think it's pronounced that way, beshert or beshert. It was meant to be, it was destined. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I it, no, this was definitely one of those things that it was definitely meant to be. <laughs> no matter how it started, <laughs> no matter how scared you might've been. Me, but I was okay. Like I said, I think she's okay. I just gotta <laughs> get used to her. <laughs> harmless, harmless, crazy woman. It's all right. But I loved it because you were so, so open. Like the, the, four, the, 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 the platform that you had of your show, Could Be You TV, was basically a platform for you to invite, you know, uh, uh, up and coming artists in whatever capacity to basically, you know, come and promote themselves. How is it you as an artist yourself, what made you decide? And you know, I've asked you all these questions before, but this is for my audience. So what is it that made you as a, an artist yourself, a model, a singer, a songwriter, what made you decide to start a show in which you could highlight other artists? Exactly that, because as an artist, um, I know how difficult it is um, to start off as an up and coming independent artist. So, uh, you know, I, I just know the, you know, the struggles that come along with a, the having to, you know, have people listen to you, to be into you, to, to take you seriously, you know, uh, this industry, you know, it's a lot of, you know, as we all know, it's not the greatest industry to be in, you know, it's a lot of, you, know, you have to be prepared, put it that way, you know, um, I, you know, I, I want to say I've been in this for such a long time that I already, I know the do's and don'ts. So I just felt like, wow, I've been lucky that I've, I've always been um, kind of like a go-getter, feisty type of no-nonsense type of girl. So don't come with me with some story or you think I'm like this little star, you know, uh, want to be with stars in my eyes and you can say anything and tell me anything. And here I am. Oh my God, you're saying you're a superstar. I want to be famous. I've never been that way, but I know a lot are. And I just feel like I just wanted to take them all and like, and like protect them. You know, like I just wanted to, to like, no, come, come to, to me, come to mama. You know, I, I got you. I got you. That's what I wanted to do. So I just wanted to provide like a stepping stone, like just like the pre things that a starting art, you know, artist would do, you know, like many of us don't get that opportunity. Like I wanted to offer that opportunity that many don't get. So even if it's just something simple as to getting their first interview, you know, um, maybe it's the first time that they're showcasing a music video or it's their first time singing live. Like I just kind of want to provide that experience for them that I was the, person who gave them that first um break sort of say oh, it's a very it's a very mothering type of thing to do you know and sort of looking at you hot latina chica <laughs> you know what i mean it's wonderful to then have that that side which is 
you know, it's very mothering. It's very nurturing. You know what I mean? And I know obviously you're a mother of two children yourself. You yeah. started your family quite early on. So how did you, as a, as a young mother, you know, married with the young kids, were you able to pursue your dreams of being a singer and a songwriter? I know you were modeling, but we, you were modeling before you got married, right? Yeah. Um, so I've been doing this ever since, you know, one can remember being back in, you know, grade school or, or you know, doing the little um, holiday, you know, plays in the school and participating in um, talent shows in the school. And so that's how I kind of like, you know, participating in all the school stuff. Um, I started out actually when I was 16, uh, I won my first beauty pageant. So from there, uh, it just took me to other gigs like uh, modeling. I did like, uh, you know, some print work. I worked for like a lingerie uh, company that we did like you know, back then it was like the newspapers. <laughs> there was a Budweiser girl for a while. I was one of those promo girls. Um, and then from there, I was a ring card girl for boxing matches. Oh, did you say ring card girl? Yes. The ones that hold up. Was... <gasps> <laughs> yes. That's that so was awesome. me. So, but I've always had music in my blood, obviously, you know. Um, so when you talk about the family and I was doing this before. Yes. Yeah, so when I, I, you know, decided to have a family now it was all about them. Now it was like, okay, um, I got to stop what I doing because I, I need to raise a family. And that's what I did for, you know, a very long time until recently when I said, you know what, they're old enough. Now they understand. I, you know, I still, I feel like I, I always say this. I feel like I'm blessed with the opportunity, you know, that I still have the opportunity, you know, it's like God said, you have a window this big, take it. And <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm going for it, you know? So I was like, okay, I did my duty. I felt like, you know, even though you'll never stop being a mom, but I just felt like this is, this is, you know, this is good right now. You know, this is good. So um, that's basically where I am right now. And, and I've been doing and going hard at it ever since. So you made, I think, I guess the, the sacrifice that I think a lot of mothers in particular make when it comes to, you know, the, the, the decision about career or family and, you know, and, and spouse, you know, husband, wife, whatever it is, how yeah. do I balance all three things? Is it possible to balance all three things? Does something have to give? Do I have to put something in the background uh, while I focus on something which is potentially more important at this time? You did that um, and it was obviously the right decision for you to make at that time because luckily you were so young. So, you know, you potentially, as long as you kept yourself alive and healthy and hot, <laughs> you know, it's, it's possible to then start again, especially in the entertainment industry. Luckily, we're able to pick up, you know, as long as you keep yourself tight and right, you're able to pick up at some point down the road and say, okay, you still have, you know, you still have your talent, you still have your looks, you still have your personality. So let's go. Um, if you still have the passion I, for it. Can I thank my parents for that? <laughs> for the gene? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, it's the Latino blood. It's the, it, but it's also your mindset. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's also about the mindset because, you know, there are, there are 25 year olds that I meet that I feel like, I'm way younger than, <laughs> you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's your mindset. You kept yourself young because that's, that's the type of person you are. And the fact that you have this, this, um, you know, this part of your personality, which is that you want to help other people. You want to really kind of nourish their experience in this industry or bringing them into this industry, which is a cutthroat industry. You've been doing it for a while. You've been writing music, releasing music. You've been in a ton of, you know, other artists' videos. You've done a ton of videos yourself, released a lot of music and you're still doing it and you still love it, you know? So is there, now that your children are older, are yeah. they supportive of your your quest to kind of still keep making music? Because the music you're making, it's not like it's, I don't know, it's not like, I don't know if there's an old style of music. You're making 
hot stuff that you if there were clubs that people are going to now with obviously covid it's, it's a problem but your music is the stuff that we would hear in the clubs so how do your grown kids feel about that um i hope they love it <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they're very supportive, you know, I mean, I guess for, for, for artists who have, you know, children, I guess my, my, um, like my children's age, they're looking at their mom, like, oh, this is not my typical mom, you know, um, wow, you know, what other moms do they know they do the things that I do and, and, you know, so I'm sure they take, you know, a look back and like, okay, you know, like, but other than that, I feel like they're very supportive and they, you know, I always consult with them. Um, you know, I have, uh, you know, Tiana, my daughter, she's also uh, an amazing, talented uh, singer. And stunning. Yes. So, um, and not only that, you know, she's a, she's a makeup artist. So she... I and have, amazing. So I have her with me a lot, you know, with the things that I do, my photo shoots and my video shoots and stuff like that. So, um, so I try to get them involved as much as I can. You know, my son Gianni as well. He's always very interested. And so what's your next show? Who's your next guest? What's going to be the topic? But he, he advances more than I'm like, I, I don't know yet. Like he already, okay, well, get to it, you know? So, so yeah, they're supportive. It's fantastic because it's like they're your, they're your cheerleaders and they're your pals and they're also involved potentially in the business, in your business. It's like a family you know, family unit, especially with you and your daughter, Tiana, who it's crazy looking at the two of you. It's like, okay, is this mother and daughter or like two pals? You know what I mean? Two best friends. It's really, it's really amazing. And it does support, you know, because there are, there are women that have chosen to have families or that it's just so happened that they had families very young, had their children very young, or there are women like me who did all my craziness, <laughs> you know, as soon as yeah. I was legal, pretty much, you know, I, I started late. I started at 21 and then I didn't stop until it was time until I was like, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready for family. I'm ready for all of that. But that meant that I was then having children, you know, I was an old mom, you know, so what, what, I guess it's, it's each to their own, but would, do you, do you, if you had the chance to do it all again, would you still have your children at that young age or would you wait till later? Which do you think, is there, is there, is there a, a preferred way? If there isn't, it's just the way that it just happened. And no, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. You know, uh, I feel that even though now I am older, you know, it's just, don't ask me how and why, but I just feel like, okay, so I feel better than I, than I did when I was younger. I feel like I'm, look better than I did when I was younger. Um, I'm more wiser, you know, I guess. You understand more, you're not, you know, there's just a lot of things that I say sometimes, oh, I'm glad nothing happened when I was doing it back then, or it didn't take me in a different direction because then I wouldn't be the way I am now. And, 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 and I'm very grateful for my family, you know, for, for my kids, for my hubby and everybody for being very supportive. Because honestly, if you don't have the support of your family, it's like very difficult to do what you want to do, you know, and, and, and you don't do it with love and you always got to have that, you know, somebody that you feel like it's not in tune with what you're doing. It makes it difficult to really achieve your dreams and your goals if you don't have them, you know, on your side. That's it, especially for with entertainment, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of knockbacks or there's a lot of trying, you put all your energy in this, being, a, being an artist, being a creator, it's your heart that's in it, you know what I mean? It's, it's your passion and it's very personal. So, you know, it's a lot of work and energy that you put into it and you, you know, it, it, you hope and pray that uh, the audience are going to love what you're doing, you know, but whether they love what you're doing or don't, you definitely need to have your backbone which is the family supporting you and being your cheerleaders and you know encouraging you to keep going and and you know loving everything that you're doing so it's 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 i am I, yeah. totally blessed and i am grateful that i do have um that support system because like i said without especially that support system you know what's the sense of having everybody else support but if you don't have the one that's really uh the one that really mean then it's it's not because um I, for myself, I, I do what I do because I love what I do, but I also do it for them. You know, I also do to, you know, uh, I'm not, I don't just do this for me, you know, like I, I, if 
you know, I want to be able, I'm, I'm hoping something pays off that I can return to do something for them. You know, I want to take care of them. I want to be the ones to, you know, to just say, hey, you know, finally I made it, you know, it took a long time, but, you know, let's just um, enjoy the fruits of the labor, you know, so. You, you know what, though, the, the inspiration that you are being, like you said earlier on, you're not just, you're not the typical mom, whatever the typical mom is. <laughs> if you think back to when you were, you know, younger and your mother was the age you are now. Like yeah. I think back to when my mother it's was crazy. my age. It's crazy. It's like, what? It's like, that was, that was a grandmother at that stage. You know what I mean? It was like old. No, I still, when I see my mom, I still cuddle with her. I still curl up like a baby. I still, she's still, she's still, which is the funniest thing. She, she, baby talks me and she does these little, you know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, mom. Like, so I don't feel like, you know, I, I honestly, it's so weird because I don't feel like I'm this mother, you know, that has these two grown children. Like I look at my children sometimes and I'm like, they're actually mine. Like, you know, are you, you still end up my niece and nephew or something, or, you know, it's just like, I look at them like, I can't believe that I birthed that. I can't believe that's my creation. I can't believe that that's mine, you know, like, so it, it's, you know, I'm so proud. I'm very proud. And no, I wouldn't have won um, the way everything fell into, you know, the, the process. It's just, I am where I need to be. Exactly. Oh my God. I love that you said that you are where you need to be. And it happened the way it was meant to happen, yeah. you know, because if, if it was, if it, if it happened a, a different way around, you know, that you, it, it, it may not have, it may not have fit. The cogs may not have fit as perfectly as they do now. Same with me. If I had, ha I mean, I didn't know what the bloody hell to even do with myself at 21, 24, whatever else. I could never have taken care of, a, of another human being, not properly, because at that stage, I was wanting to get out and sow my oats, as it were. You know what I mean? Travel around the world, do whatever I'm doing with whomever I'm doing it with. How do you do that when you've got children at home waiting but you weren't you weren't crazy like I was you know what I mean you you were you were sensible from <laughs> you were born sensible I was sensible and then went through the uh phase you know and I still have a bit of that I but it's like going through uh, well that's it <laughs> I still have a bit of that but because I've done so much of it mm -hmm. it's like okay been there done that right. now I'm I'm ready to I, because I know myself better and I've had experiences that's there's a reason I have the tattoo that says mother has lived because I have but then I'm I'm able to be fully present then for my young children it's exhausting that's for sure you hear me complaining a lot like oh babe oh my gosh yeah this uh, homeschooling oh, oh my gosh well, uh, I'm sure as many mothers with children your age, you would. I'm sure, you know, I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate that we're living in, in trying times right now that it was nothing to back then. So I do feel a lot for all the mothers like yourself. And I applaud you for even, you know, uh, attempting to do what we never did, you know. And, and even though, you know, it's like it has, you know, it's like back then we really didn't even have the technology that we have now, right? And then you can, it's, you would think it's easier just to, okay, put your child, watch TV or, you know, play on your video games or play on your iPad and all that. So it was different then, but then again, it was just like, okay, I'm going outside to play and there are till, you know, dawn hits or, or whatever. And Which to me is a better time. You remember, I remember growing up that, that you get home from school. If you've done your homework, it's you go out and you go and play. You know, and there was no fear of this, fear of that. It was, you go out, you take your bike, you go and run around with your friends until it's time for bed. Your mum would call out the window. Or your, in my case, it was my brother calling out because my mother was working three jobs at one point. You know, it's time to come in, wash up, go to bed. You know, right. these days, it's, it's very hard to have that. We are, you and I are very lucky. We yeah. live in the suburbs. You know, we've got, you know, backyards. Your backyard is like a paradise, um, you know, but your kids are not, <laughs> they don't need to go out and go out and play. They're going out and doing other things. They're working and building their careers. But for my kids to have a big backyard to just say, okay, and it's fenced in, it's locked, go out and play, <laughs> you know, come in when I call you. You know, it's, it's the safety of having that. 
in the city, it's slightly different. You have to really be very, very vigilant, you know, so we're lucky to, to have all that. But anyway, let's fast forward. Beyond kids and being fabulous, fabulous parents, hot, hot mummy. Um, talk to me about your music now. I know, obviously, I've known uh, quite a lot of your music. Your music, you're now taking a slightly different turn or adding something new to what your musical style has been. Tell me about your music that you were doing before now and how it's going to be going forward. So... I've been the artist that um, I never define myself as in any specific genre because I've been such a like a versatile artist. You know, I started off with um, doing uh, Latin music. So I'm um, like a lot, you know, a Latin artist. I had a lot of, you know, Spanish background, you know, so that's where I basically, that was my forte. But just um, tell, tell people where your family are from. Um, Boricua, baby. See. Puerto Rican in the house. <laughs> yes, boom. <laughs> so um, that was my forte doing the Latin music. But um, where I came from, you know, uh, where I was born and, and raised, which was, um, you know, in Brooklyn, we have an eclectic sound of everything, you know. Um, East New York, uh, which many of you, you know, know is with like a melting pot. You know, so I had everything around me. I had the R&B, you know, I had the hip hop, the rap, the old school, the, you know, dance music. The, so to me, it was like, wow, I want to do it all because I love music in general. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm only going to be, you know, uh, a dance artist or I'm only going to be an R&B singer or, you know, like I couldn't do that because I loved all the styles of music that I just wanted to. So that's what I kind of like carried myself throughout the years was just doing some type of a little bit of everything, you know, which kind of like a lot of uh, artists like to define themselves what they are, and then they cross over. And then to me, it was like, I'm going to do as it comes along. I'm not limiting myself. Oh, let me only do this now. I can't do that because then I don't want them to, you know, like I was just like, listen, I, I'm going to do music, period. And it has helped me because I've done a lot of performances and a lot of shows and concerts where they require, it's, a, you know, uh, required me to do dance music, you know, and I got a catalog of dance music. Then there was a Latin festival. So here I am doing my, my, my Spanish music, you know, so I have, I always say that I'm blessed that uh, I have the ability to dominate both worlds. So I'm taking advantage of it. You know? Also, it's it's part of your personality, and I'm going to say, you know, the Libra in you is that you 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 like a bit of everything, and why not? So, if you can do a bit of everything, why not do that? And that's the beauty of being an independent artist, because I think, Absolutely. you know, I've heard so many so many horror stories of people that were signed to a label, and you know, the label oh, has right. said, nope, this is this is your genre, this is the style that you're coming out with, and it's it 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 stifles an artist. You know what I mean? You feel like, okay, I have to stick to this one thing, but I'm, I'm so much more and I'm not allowed to really explore everything that I want to. So that's the beauty of being an independent that artist. Beauty, you know? And th that's probably a, a whole different show on being independent or being, uh, you know, signed. But yes, being independent, you know, has these little perks like that because you do have control more of what, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to say per se, I'm a controlling person, but I do like to be in control of what I like. I, you know, I want to sing what I want to sing. I want to do that kind of music. I want to do, like, don't tell me that I can or cannot do nothing. And I think that's where the problem lies. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't take, uh, I, don't know, I don't take that very well. <laughs> So I, you, um, you and me both, baby. You and me both. I'm signed, you know, um, to a label, and they tell me, "Well, you can't sing that. You have to sing this." What's gonna happen? Like, um, I'm like, I'm gonna the, the Latina attitude is gonna come on. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do unless we're naked in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's one of those things. Like, don't tell me what to do. You know, like I want to do what I want to do. So. But of course, being signed to a record label has major perks as well. So it's whatever I feel as an artist, what are you looking for for the future? What do you expect? How long, you know, longevity you plan to, you know, it's just so many. That's why I said it's a totally different show. But. So, so tell me now, 
like going forward, because you've been making music, you've started recording music again, which is fantastic. Um, the one for the summer, I mean, I'm going to say, I've, listen, I've heard you, your other songs. For some reason, this one that came out last summer during quarantine, Who's That Girl? It just got me. Like I was blasting it all over the house, in the backyard, in my car. I love, love, love it. What was the inspiration behind that? Because we both have an artist that we both love as well. Tell me how you got well, to that Well, aside song. from being Madonna, who's that girl, Madonna? <laughs> um, so actually, it, it's so funny because that, that song, Who's That Girl? It was like I had an epiphany one day. I said, I want to do a song. I said, I'm looking for it to do a song that kind of describes who I am. Okay. Um, and, it, it, and it's so funny because exactly that is like sometimes or most of the time I would go anywhere or show up someplace or I always hear the whispers. Who, who's that girl? Like, who, like, who is she? You know, like, for oh, any like I said, like I said, who is she? Who, who is exactly? you? <laughs> there you go. Right. Exactly. It's like, you know, I mean, for whatever reason, it was always, who, who's that girl, you know, whether it was like, who's that girl or who's that girl or who's that girl, you know, it just stuck like, oh my God, who's that? Oh my God, I have to do the song. Like, I, so, um, so that's what, that's what the inspiration uh, definitely came. And when it came down to putting down the formula and, and, and creating it, um, I had an amazing, amazing producer and, and friend named A King who actually uh, produced it. And he actually has a, a, a you know, a, a, a cameo on the song. So um, it just came out exactly how, how I wanted it, you know, so. Love it. Okay, so we've done the summer, we've done the holidays, and now, even just like yesterday, two days ago, I heard some new music. Please tell me about your new music going forward. And we're going to, where, as if it's you and I, you're going to be releasing a lot of stuff this coming year. So tell me about how your music, what the style is, what the, how you're kind of navigating new music, because one of them, I was like, no, no, no I need to hear more. What, what do you, what do you mean? I it's, no, I need more. You're like, no, 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 listen, this is what's happening. So explain, explain to my audience what you're doing. I'm just getting a, you know, a, for the new year, you know, I know it's a cliche, you know, all new year, new me. Um, I don't really say new year, new me. It's more like new year um, improved me. You know, um, not necessarily new, but um, I am coming out with a different sound, I want to say. Uh, uh, it's my music. I just wanted it to be more of how I'm feeling, which is a certain vibe. You know, I'm feeling some type of way. This is the vibe that goes with how I'm feeling. So the kind of music that I'm doing now is exactly that, a vibe. You know, it's a very, I want to say laid back, funky, sensual, um, catchy melodic very you know so so what, what you heard you know we'll, we'll kind of like plug it in um it's a it's a brand new song that i'm doing um that i'm collaboration with an amazing amazing artist himself um by the name of saj and um we listened to the song he listened to the song he immediately he's an amazing songwriter so he already had like the idea, he boom, 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 this is what's gonna be. I, you know, I gave him more or less of what, what you know, like a topic, I guess, you know, and, and it's just, I got it, boom, boom, boom. And, and the way that we go at this song, it's just like it flowed. And it's not, I, I can't even say you had like a, a, um, the exclusive preview to it. You know, it's not really 100% out there yet, but um, that was a, a feeler. To, so you can know what is to come. I love that. And I'm hoping that by the time I publish this episode, um, you can give me something I can at least tease people with. Um, but we'll, we'll discuss that. But I love that this is, you're now going with just how you feel. Like it's, it's, it's like, you, do you feel freer with, with what you're like, with the, like not the topics, but you're going, specifically with this is how I'm feeling and this is what I'm going to write about simple as that well it's more like uh, I'm more laid back you know I'm not 
stressing to want to have something so oh my I gotta you know like it, it's not it's not as busy as when I did my dance songs my EDM songs my you know everything was fast paced too much a, a lot of work this is more chill it's more me it's more whatever you know yeah. it's just like so that's how I'm basically looking at everything going on you know it's just like one day at a time take it slow take a breather breathe you know, type of thing. So I love that. And it, it's, it's, it's inspiring, I think, for other artists who are, who are feeling the pressure to either be something specific or write about something specific or whatever. And maybe, I mean, is this as a result of quarantine? I mean, this 2020 did a number on, on, on many of us. And we are, you and I are very, very lucky that we are still alive. We still have our family members that are alive and healthy. So did that have any effect on your, like your new writing and your new mindset with your music? Well, obviously, like with everybody else, this has totally been such a year that it caught everyone um, off guard. Um, you know, as you know, uh, I, I did my show, uh, you know, out of a studio, which I had live on, on you know, on, t on TV. And um, it, it was like cut off. Everybody was like, it, it was like a, a, a rug pulled right under you. And you just like, what now? And so that kind of put a stagnant on everything that I was doing. And, and it kind of left a lot of things up in the air. It's like, what's next? What's going to happen? What, what, what are we, like, what now? So it was a period of time that just hibernated kind of didn't do anything. Like I, I'm like, just honestly, just bummed out because that's how you were feeling. Like you were feeling like you were in some kind of, I don't know, war zone, you know, like some like you don't, you had to be locked. Literally it was like a lockdown in your own home you were prison in your home basically that's what it was that's exactly what it was we were prisoners in our own home that's exactly what it was yeah, yeah. so um but then when things you know there, there had to be some time to wake up and say wait but waste is so you know so much of this and during the quarantine um i just came up with um with the idea that i i needed um i needed to work i needed to wake up you're wasting time you know, and things can be done. So uh, I was blessed enough to um, have a, a studio built, you know. Um, By your amazing husband who, I mean, <laughs> listen, we're not, we're not all lucky enough to have a husband who, I was about to say is good with his hands. I will, I will not edit that out. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, I'm not. I'm talking about building, you ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about ladies building. Man, Loretta would not suggest such a thing. But I love that he basically just built you this. It's like a. It's like an apartment next to your house. Yeah, you know, a big shout out and a big hand of applause for an amazing oh. job. <laughs> wonderful 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 job and it looks amazing I love what you've done with it and you have you know you have the same like a similar taste you and I have the similar taste so I love I mean you know you walk in it's just it's comfortable you want to just hang out um you know and this this to me is a step towards what your end goal your end dream is so talk to me now in front of my audience talk to me about what your but your end goal, your plan, your, your five-year plan for Linda Lynn, what is that? You know what's so funny? I hear a lot of people ask those questions. What is your five-year I don't have, I don't make plans. You know, I, I really just go with the flow. Um, to me, of course, number one priority in my life is as long as my family is happy and good. Okay. Once that is established, that I can continue doing it because if that's not in, in its right place, then I can't continue. I can't just say, oh, well, that's too bad. Let me go do what I have. You know, like I need to make sure that my family is good, you know, in every way. So once that's out of the way, then I can move on to what I do. And I basically take everything step by step, you know, because of the quarantine, everything we do, you know, I feel like everything that I had done, I'm kind of going a little bit backwards because I have to start from scratch, but then moving forward, it's different and improved. You know, it's like, it's a different route, you know, but it hasn't been easy. It's not an easy road, you know, because not only do I, am I an independent artist, but I also have a, a show, 
you know, my talk show to, to also concentrate and as well to get up and running. And so it's, it's a lot on my shoulders and it's taken a while, but little by little is coming along, you know, so I don't have that plan, but my plan is just to continue doing what I love, which is um, talking, talking, talking. <laughs> I w- there will be no talk show if I don't talk, right? And doing music. You know, music to me is everything. So whether, you know, I can't say, okay, I'm going to stop at three or four years, stop doing music. And I'm going to like, I can't see myself doing that. Like, what do, you know, it's a passion and um, whatever, you know, music is life. That's I'm going to have that title right here. Honey, that's one of my hashtags for me. This is how I'm getting through, you know, much of the craziness that's going on. Music is life. It really is. It can take you to a space. It can help you escape a certain space as well. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lifeline. It really is. Like what would be your advice about the best way to balance, you know, for any of us parents, be it, you know, male, female, doesn't matter. What would be the best advice that you would give about how to balance I mean, I think you've already said it in the beginning about how you decided to raise your family and, and put aside your, your music and your own aspirations with career. But what would you say this day and age, you know, knowing what you know now, you know, uh, having ex- the experiences that you have, what would you say is the best advice you would give someone coming up or someone who is, you know, in a career that they're, it's not really their passion and they have a family, et cetera, et cetera, but they're afraid to, to step out and really follow what their dreams are. What would you say is the best way for people to actually try and pursue what they really love and how to balance still keeping their family happy and keeping themselves happy? Loretta, I, I honestly wish I can answer that like as a, an, an advice type of thing. I can't give that advice because everybody is different with different situations. Um, like I said, I am blessed that I am in a situation where I have an extremely supportive family. So that gives me a more leeway and, and it's easier for me to continue doing what, what I'm doing. Um, for other people, I don't know how, what their situations are. But to me, I would just say, obviously, family has to come first. You know, you can't pursue your passion and leave your family behind because then I don't think that's going to work very well. You know, that that is the advice, Linda. You say you you can't give advice because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anyone's situation is. The fact is, if the the considering my, you know, my podcast is about, you know, primarily it's about parents and how we balance our adult life, our life as, as, as adults without, you know, without anyone else attached to us. You know, how do we remain the fabulous adults that we are or want to be and still be present and be good parents so that is the advice the advice and, and this is this is not it's not rocket science but it is still something that some people still need to hear that family does come first you know because there will be parents out there male or female like i said or non-gender specific whatever just humans that have children you know and and feel like they must put a hundred percent into pursuing their goals, their, their career or whatever else, because that will be a good uh, example for the children. It will show the children, you know, that, that, that you can have it all, you can do everything. But if the child or the children that you have chosen to be p- part of your life and your family, if they're neglected, if they're put on the, on the yes. shelf, how, you're not you're not that's nurturing actually <laughs> yeah the, how can that work out that's that's, that's you've out. chosen you've chosen to bring these humans into your life right. you have to spend time nurturing them yeah right absolutely. so it's that i mean that, that is, it never stops nurturing but it comes to you know it, it, you don't have to give as much as when they're uh, younger and don't understand why you know, why you're choosing to go to, you know, the studio and, and, and not here with me, you know, and unless you have, you're in a situation, you got to drag them with you. I, I, you know, it's just, it, it, does it really, if you have to go through so much struggles, you know, some people have to think, is, is it worth the sacrifice of the family? You know? That's it. I think that is, that is the perfect advice, you know, and I think a lot of people, have that voice, the niggling voice in their head or in their stomach 
saying that to them but the driving thing is like no i've got to i've got to you know i've got to become ceo or i've got to you know release the, this song or this song's got to be a hit or whatever i've got to have something that's a hit to show my children and yeah it might They're that might be the thing progress as it's um, going along that's another good thing why I am doing it what I'm doing now because it's like they're on the journey with me as well, you know, and they're understanding, especially my daughter, Tiana, who's on the same um, artistic journey, you know, so this kind of gives her uh, an insight of what's to come, you know. And just just for a little bit of explanation to my audience, your daughter, Tiana, um, she... When I first heard her voice, I mean, let's let's just let's do a you know everyone knows the show, the voice. So let's pretend you can't see the person because truly, if you see her, you're just going to be like, oh my god, okay, you can have whatever you want. You want a ten year contract with <laughs> with uh, where, she, you can have what <laughs> you know what I mean. That's she's what she the, is my secret gem. Okay, <laughs> like, I keep her locked away in the tower and the, the secret <laughs> No, no, she doesn't. She seriously does not. But it's wonderful because your daughter has, you know, when I, when you and I first met, you know, there was this, this. Uh, she was very hesitant about, you know, pursuing the music. But the girl opens her mouth to sing, and I remember hearing. Well, I can't remember what the song was, but hearing her sing, I was looking at her Instagram, and I'm pretty sure I just sat there and tears were rolling down my face like the voice that just oh my goodness <laughs> me and not everyone has that talent you know what I mean there are a lot of people that have beautiful voices and no connection necessarily to what they're singing and then there are people that have great connection and not such a great voice you yeah. know what I mean and then there are people that just have the whole package so I love it now, in hindsight, I love that she had took her own time and you allowed her to take her own time to figure out if this was something that she wanted. Because quite frankly, she was looking at you, hot mom, and she's like, um, I'm supposed to now be trying to pursue the same thing that my mom is pursuing. And she, people look at her and she's so vivacious and amazing and talented and everyone wants to know her. Like, where do I fit in? Her niche, it's wonderful because her niche is very different from, you know, she's very different from you in that way, you Absolutely. know? There's no, there, there, there's no such thing as competition in this house, you know? Yes. Because uh, at any point in time, if it means for me to drop my career to start hers, no hesitation, no, not even to think about it, you know? So, and so that day comes, you know? But that's the thing, you won't need to because she is old enough where the two of you and the two careers can coexist and you are mama bear as it is not just to <laughs> strangers but certainly to your children as well so right. if whatever she needs you are there you don't need to drop anything per se you might be like okay just hold on two seconds i need to just take care of this you know which is it's wonderful it's the most incredible setup in that way you know it's 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 I would say it's like the perfect setup. You know, you 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 you've you still have to be mother. <laughs> that's the thing. Sure. You still have to be mama, and I know you have to. Sometimes you have to pull out the mama thing, but that's right. that's the beauty of it. You have the freedom to pursue what you're doing, and she is now at a stage where she is comfortable pursuing stuff, and you can help her, and you can also just let her get on with it. You and know, I, and I, I love that. I love that. It's it's both. It's both because she needs mama still as we all do, you do. You still have mommy speaking yeah. in the little baby voice in your ear and you love it, <laughs> you, you, right? You were just visiting actually, her recently. Actually, I just seen her pop in on my uh, live stream. On really? <laughs> oh my gosh, please tell her I said hello. Okay, Linda, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna take up any more of your evening. I am so happy that we were able to do this. And it really, it's come through full circle. I'm so grateful that you planted this seed in me to want to actually sit and talk to people on camera and you know and have fun you know what I mean so I appreciate you one million percent thank you thank, thank you, you thank you thank you so much for having me on your show congratulations you are doing an amazing amazing job I'm afraid here you might take my spot too but anyway 
there is no there is no taking of spots there is space for all of us we are different although we are the same <laughs> right but that's that's the thing it's about it's the, the whole premise of could be you it's like you were promoting everyone that that you saw was had something to say or had something something creative to put out there you weren't saying oh no oh this is a beautiful young rapper or beautiful young latina artist or whatever no i'm not gonna have one you don't you don't have you don't have that that's not part of your makeup you know what i mean so I will always support anything that you're doing because I think you're wonderful. I love your heart. Likewise, I love your soul. My beauty. Likewise, and congratulations. And I can only all, uh, wish you the best of everything that you do in the future and your future endeavors and continue much success. And I love you. <laughs> I love you. Let's log off now. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>